Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to another session of Data Structures and Algorithms. My name is Dr. Bilal Wajid and today we're going to talk about recursive functions. Now, recursive functions are functions that call upon themselves. They're similar to loops, yet usually they are a lot more powerful. You can think of them as Russian dolls. So Russian dolls are where a bigger doll encapsulates within it a smaller doll, which encapsulates within it a smaller one and a smaller one, and in turn a smaller one. Here is an example of a factorial function, which is an iterative version of the factorial function, where we want to find out the factorial of s. So you're going to start with s, and you're going to decrement, so it's going to be s, and then i is going to be s minus 1, and then s minus 2, all the way till it reaches 1. And the last one is going to be 1, and then it's going to stop. That's why the equal to operator here, greater than equal to. Now, the important thing to recognize here are three things. The first is the start. So i has been initialized to s, so there are two things here. So, uh, one is double answer has been assigned as 1, and i has been assigned as s. That is our starting component. Then there is the end, which is otherwise referred to as a stopping criteria in recursive functions. So the loop ends when i reaches 1. That is the last time the iterative function or the loop works. So uh, the last is answer has been assigned as answer times 1. And the last thing is the update. So there are two things which are getting updated. One is the answer itself, which gets updated, which the answer here stores the final factorial. It is a running product, we can see here. And the other thing which gets updated is i. i is being decrementing every step. So it's s and then s minus 1 and then s minus 2. Now, let's consider a factorial function here. So this is our factorial function in loop, and this is our factorial function in recursion. So this is a function of the factorial and the recursive function. The factorial function is written on the left-hand side, the loop iterative version, and the recursive function is written on the right-hand side. You can see they really look like the same. So double factorial integer s and double factorial integer s, and the answer is being stored in this variable answer, ans. So on the outside, they really look the same way. So let's again look at the start, our end, and update step by step. So this is our start. The start has two components. The first is double answer, which is assigned one. We need to assign it one in the loops because it is a running product. and the it loop itself starts with s. Now we can combine these two things as a single statement where we are really, what we are doing is we are saying, well, double answer has been assigned the value s. The next part is the end, which is i is greater than equal to 1. So this is the element or the condition that forces the loop to end. Now, in recursive functions, it's referred to as the stopping criteria. So whenever s is equal to 1, we should just return the answer 1. And the last thing is the update. So uh, the update here is i, which is being decremented, and the answer, which is the running product here. So the both things can be combined together as answer has been assigned as answer times factorial s minus 1, where the factorial s minus 1 is, in fact, a recursive call. So this is what makes a recursive function a recursive function because the factorial function is calling out the factorial function s minus 1. Think of it as our Russian doll, which s is bigger, and the function that it calls out is giving it a smaller value, so s minus 1, so that's our smaller Russian doll. So the three things combined together, this is our final recursive function. So this is the factorial function that you all are well aware of, but in recursive format. In the recursive format, again, let's say you're giving it the value 4. So initially, answer is assigned as 4 because s is not 4. You go to answer has been assigned as 4 times factorial of 3. So now this bigger Russian doll is going to encapsulate a smaller Russian doll of and assigning it the value 
3. So answer becomes answer times factorial of 3. So when you call out factorial 3, it stores within it, it calls out factorial 2, and then factorial 2 calls out factorial 1, and factorial 1 doesn't call out anything, it just returns 1. And when it returns 1, it actually calls back to the same, it really comes back to the same statement here. So it was 2, because it was factorial 2 that called out factorial 1, it comes back here, it returns to the same point here, and you have 2 times 1, and the answer becomes 2, and it returns 2. Because it was factorial 3 that calls out factorial 2, so 3 times 2 becomes 6, and so on. It's pictorially shown here that factorial 4 calls out the function factorial 3, which calls out the function factorial 2, which calls out the factorial function 1. 1 doesn't call out anything because s is equal to 1, so it returns 1. So it returns 1 to factorial 2. Answer gets updated, so answer is now 2 times 1. And we see that's what we have here. That is returned to factorial function 3. So answer becomes 3 times 2. The total answer is 6. That is returned to factorial 4. And therefore, you have 4. Answer has been assigned as answer times factorial 3. Factorial 3 gave the answer 6. So it becomes 4 times 6. It calculates that. That becomes 24. And that is our answer. Right? So I would recommend you actually try running this program in cpp.shell. I won't run it for you because this is relatively an easier task. Now, I would strongly recommend you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified for new videos. Up until next time, thank you very much. Bye-bye.